This video is on how I make production patterns with aluminum using an original 3D printed pattern as the master, as is with this one Keith Rucker supplied. This pattern will be for the 12 inch straight edges, the Rucker straight edges that will be available soon. And the flask I'm using, normally I wouldn't use one this small, but it was convenient for this application and we're just pouring aluminum so I'm not worried about burning holes in the end of my flask. For optimum finish I'm using Petrobon and I am making two sets of patterns, uh, four halves and the goal will be to round two of these in one flask. This is just the pattern making process. I will not be doing the straight edges in this video. The registration holes that you see in 3D printed patterns for my purpose are not needed. These are going to have to be either filled in or capped off as I'm going to do with these. And they will be drilled out later in the actual aluminum castings. I could have just as easily have filled the holes in with sand, but I just happened to have some change in my pocket, so I used it. Three D printed patterns behave differently from wooden or aluminum ones in the fact that they are not rigid; uh, they vibrate a lot, so uh, they can be a challenge to pull from the sand at times. These, for the most part, pulled out fairly clean. I have a little lip of sand here on the end gates that I have to remove. I don't want any of that washing into the casting if I can help it, but these are just patterns. It's not like they're going to be serving a purpose where they're going to be machined. little splash basin there from the sprue. As for my pouring temperature, I always try to hold it around 12 to 1300 degrees. Uh, 
I try not to go any hotter than that if I can help it. I'm grinding off all the high spots on the plane here. I want this as flat as possible. What I'm doing here is removing the coin impressions from capping off the registration holes. Yes, I had to throw Dollar in there. She's getting bigger by each video. Now you can see the detail of the lettering. It definitely needs attention. I spent an entire day just chasing these letters out, uh, using the Dremel tool, some files, and right here I noticed I have some warpage. And I decided to take a look at the actual 3d printed pattern here and it's also doing the same thing so i replicated it into my castings so that's going to need some work uh, for now we're worried about the lettering getting all this cleaned up i don't want any sand grabbing in between this lettering i want it to all pull cleanly Okay, so now we're on the flat lap table and I am taking down any other high spots that I missed. And my goal here is to have a good flat plane that goes all the way around the perimeter of this. Along the edge and also along the edge of these little windows. I don't want to have gaps there. When I put these things together in the mold when I get ready to do the iron castings, I want these to be sitting rigidly flat. I don't want them compressing, springing, or vibrating as I'm trying to ram sand around them. So it's critical that I get these as solid as possible. So in order to do that, I'm going to mix up Durham's water putty and I'm going to coat the back side of these only where it needs it. I'm not worried about coating the entire surface just those low areas and then I'm gonna have to repeat the process put them on the flat lap and bring that down and in some cases several of them had to have the reapplication done about three times total so it took nearly a week just to get the water putty built up enough in those places sanded in order for me to go any further. It's a very time consuming process. But these are going to be production patterns so you want them right. As you can see here I had already drilled two registration holes on two of the halves. I drilled all the way through and those are going to be used as pilots to guide my drill once I'm finished sanding everything and I'll clamp them together and use those to drill all the way through into the other piece. And then the outside of, or the exterior of that hole that shows is going to be filled back in.
This is one before I sanded, and then I've got one I'm fixing to show you that I already flat sanded. And you can see what I'm shooting for here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but there's some areas here that have to have a reapplication. So we're done with that. This is towards the end of the week. And there's still some little cracks there, but I can live with that. There's no problem. All right, I'm checking to make sure I don't have it vibrate as I touch them. And I'm using a turning tool here in order to carve out any water putty that squeezed out here. Along with lightly burr the actual windows. There was really no flashing there, but it is taking out a little bit of the aluminum with it. Okay, and I'm also using a Dremel just to remove the excess on some harder to get areas. So now I'm trying to get them lined up the best I can, clamped, and that guide hole I was telling you about earlier is what I'm using now to drill through and form the other side of the registration diameter. So once these are through, I'll be able to insert the dowels. also numbering these as you can see the two on the top i drew i i wrote a number one on and this set will be number two so number one is going to always go on number one number two will always go on number two Now that I have the corners broke, I'm going to mix up a two-part JB Weld epoxy. This will secure the pins in one side of the pattern. And with registration holes, along with the pins, these pins do not need to protrude more than one-eighth of an inch off the surface of that plane. Uh, some people get carried away. They like to go half inch, one inch sometimes. And there's no need for that because, uh, if anything, it causes more problems when you go to separate the pattern. Uh, when you go to pull the pattern out of the mold and you separate the flask, you could be out of parallel up to a degree on your cope as you're lifting it off the drag. Well, if you have a very tight tolerance in that registration hole, and you have a long pin in there, it's not going to allow that pattern to tilt a degree, correct? So what's going to happen is it'll grab the upper half of the pattern and just tear it out of the cope as you're trying to pick it off of there. So uh, the shallower that pin height is, the better. And while I was talking, I, you can see that I had already drilled and tapped the uh, draw a hole to pull the pattern with and tested it with my tool and everything's going to work fine there now i'm test fitting them and now i'm pointing out the holes that i have to fill in on the outside and i want to make sure that those holes get filled all the way to the pin i don't want any air in there if i can help it and there's my pull, uh, pull rod that i draw the pattern with. I'm 
got it to the right consistency not too thick not too thin and I ended up having to cut a small piece of stick off in order to go down in the hole and push through and push the air out like I said I want this solid all the way down to the pin and that'll also help retain the pin in place if it gets bumped the adhesive that I put in there works fairly well but um, you know any additional support on the back side of it will is always a good thing now I'm taking a wood rasp and knocking the excess down wood rasp really cut this stuff well if you use the coarse sides and I didn't show it but I ran a pass across my belt sander along all edges just to blend, help blend everything in uh, there were times when I had to use rotary tools to get down in the tight corners like this and while I got that same tool pattern going I decided to go ahead and blend it at the time and finally we're getting to where we can paint these things I'm using a lacquer paint and I've got about four layers on there probably could have used some more but I've got so much stuff on the back burner right now I'm trying to get caught up with. Uh, we're just going to go with this for now and get Keith some test parts cast in iron shipped to him to get his approval. And then once he says okay on that, we're going to be rolling on these. So keep your eyes out for these. But this is it good looking patterns there is a slight little crack on the ends uh, I didn't get that perfect but uh, we're gonna I can live with this I'm not gonna worry with that Like and subscribe to Windy Hill Foundry to see all the upcoming projects coming up in the future. I have several videos coming up over the next couple months that should be pretty interesting. I hope you have a good day and so long.